Good afternoon, my name is Franco Vertoli and welcome to the Simulation Express Lunch and Learn webinar for CAD Dimensions. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Simulation Express and some of the neat tools that, uh, that SOLIDWORKS offers right out of the box uh, for some quick and simple uh, FEA on your parts. Um, first of all, uh, today's agenda for Simulation Express, we'll just be talking about some assumptions that uh, Simulation Express makes and um, that you have to keep in mind as you're running your analysis. Then we'll just uh, we'll run through the analysis. You'll see that it's wizard-based. And um, we'll just go through and then we'll analyze the results, create some reports, and even do some optimization of our design with Simulation Express, which is a neat uh, piece of functionality that they added in the past couple of years. And at the end of the Lunch and Learn, we will have some time for Q&A. You'll notice that you are all muted right now. Um, we will keep you muted throughout the presentation, but uh, feel free to type any questions you may have, and uh, we'll try to type back to you as soon as possible. Okay, um, I promise not a lot of PowerPoint slides in this presentation. Uh, I just wanted to kind of mention the assumptions that we make. That this is one of the only slides that we have. Simulation Express is for parts only. You cannot do assemblies with Simulation Express. You do need the full-blown simulation package that's included in SOLIDWORKS Premium or any of the simulation uh, pieces of software. Um, Express only does linear static studies, which means both that it has to be a linear material, so you're working over here in the linear part of the stress-strain curve. Okay, so any um, any stresses or strains, as soon as the load is released, goes back to zero. Um, so just keep that in mind. So it is a linear material. We're dealing with small deformations, which basically means that they may not be visible to the naked eye. Um, I avoided using a number for small deformations because it, because it is relative to the size of the model. So if you're working on something that's an inch long, then maybe 0.1 inches is acceptable. But if you're working on something that's 10 of a simply supported rod that's 10 feet long, um, you know, anything up to an inch or two inches might be acceptable. Again, um, always working within this portion of the stress strain curve. And you can only have static loads, and uh, the loads are only forces or pressures in Simulation Express. If you want to add more complex um, loads or more complex restraints, then you're going to have to move up to SOLIDWORKS Premium or some of the, uh, the Simulation Professional or Simulation Premium packages. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to hop over to SOLIDWORKS here. We have a simple bracket here. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that this is glued to a wall, um, a, an infinitely stiff wall with infinitely strong glue. And we're going to add a load to this and see what happens. To activate Simulation Express, all you do is you go into Tools, so the second or third one down is here called Simulation Express. And it is all wizard driven over here on the right hand side. Uh, this is called your task pane. You have three options. Um, options, start over or next. We're going to click options and we're just going to talk about these real quick. Here you can choose your units. So it's SI or English. Now these units are for your simulation only. As you may know, down here in the lower right-hand corner of SOLIDWORKS 2012, you can actually change your unit system for the entire part. So let's just change the part to uh, inches as well. Uh, we're going to come back to that in a second. You also set up your results location. Uh, and this is where it saves all the result files. You may want to change this to where your, um, where your files are stored so that you have everything in the same spot. There's also a checkbox for show annotation for maximum and minimum uh, in the result plots, and I'm going to check that. We'll see these here in a second. So you click OK, and basically we're ju we just click Next throughout the entire thing. So you can see here our steps are always at the top of our Simulation Express tree. Step one is fixtures, then loads. Material you see already has a green check mark because the material has already been assigned over here in our uh, SOLIDWORKS part. Also down here we get a tab and uh, the Simulation Express study. So this study is going to get saved with the part 
even if the results don't get uh, saved with the part, if you send this to somebody, um, they can just rerun your Simulation Express analysis if you don't send them the results. Okay, so let's add a fixture. The only fixture that Simulation Express supports is fixed, which means that every node of the mesh is going to be immovable. That may add some uh, stress concentrators. We'll talk about that later on. But that may add some stress concentrators. Just know that, um, that you may see higher stresses in the areas surrounding your fixed geometry. We are going to fix this back face. Hit the green check mark. You see it's all with, right within SOLIDWORKS. We'll click the green check mark and it adds the fixed restraint in the simulation area of the feature tree over here. Okay. For those of you familiar with simulation, you can go ahead and add a load right here. We know we can right click the external loads folder. Or if you're comfortable with the wizard, you can just click next. You can add a fixture, you can edit an existing fixture, or you can click next. Um, we're only going to fix this back face, so we click Next. Again, Simulation Express only supports forces and pressures. If you want to add more complex um, loads, then I, again, you have to move on to one of the other simulation packages. We're just going to add a force here to this face. And this face was just created using a split line. Okay, If you're not familiar with sp split lines, we do have some, uh, some other tutorials on our website and on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to check those out. All right, we're just going to add a force of about 3,000 pounds, or exactly 3,000 pounds to this face. We click the green check mark, and you can see loads get a, gets a green check mark here. We can add forces in other directions as well if we need to, and uh, we can add other pressures or edit again. We click Next. Material, it's already done. It gives us the Young's modulus and the yield strength of, um, of our steel. We can choose to change the material, so if we're doing a, a bunch of different studies, we can actually change the material in, in different studies without affecting our SOLIDWORKS model. We click Next, and here we have more settings, and this is a, this is a mesh. Simulation Express does tell us that our model is ready to solve, um, or we can change the settings where we can change the mesh density. Now, for those of you new to, to FEA, basically what the mesh is is a mathematical model of your geometry. So what the simulation solver solves for is the mathematical model. Basically, it breaks up your model into tetrahedrons, or pyramids, sort of. And what we can do is we can change the mesh density to coarse or fine. Or if you like to see numbers, you can check the mesh parameters, and you can manually type in a, toler a global size and a tolerance for our, um, for our mesh. I'm just going to change this up to a little bit uh, finer mesh and we click OK. And you can see here it's meshing our model. When we're ready, we click Next, or when it's done, we click Next, and we can run the simulation. Okay. Instantly, it solves for our, for our displacement and shows us an animation of our displacement. The beauty of this is we can actually rotate it and zoom in, zoom out if we need to to bet, take a better look at our deformation. Notice the deformation scale. Don't think that with 3,000 pounds we're going to move this part that much. This is actually a 3 quarter inch steel. So our deformation scale is 49 and change. We can stop the animation. It asks us, does the part deform as you expect? Yes or no? If you click no, basically it will return you back to where you apply your loads and fixtures and you can change them there. In this case, it does deform the way we expect, and it jumps us right into the factor of safety plot. Now, these are these min and max annotations that we checked in the initial options dialog. So we see our minimum factor of safety is 1.61, and our maximum is 11,000. So we can be fairly sure that this part will not fail under 3,000 pounds of load. If I, if I needed to keep something bigger than 1.6, I can actually show where it's um, below. Let's say I'm working to a factor of safety of 2.5. I can have simulation show me where it's less than 2.5. Okay, so what I can do is I can beef up the model in this general area and rerun the analysis. 
I can also show the stresses. All right, so we can see where the stress concentrators are. We can see obviously right here in the corner, uh, the stresses are highest. Even though it's red, that doesn't necessarily mean that our part is failing because the yield strength of steel, as we know, is 30,000 PSI. Our maximum is only about 18 and a, you know 18,600 PSI. So we're we're nowhere near failing. We can also animate this plot so we can see the stress propagate through. When we're done viewing our results, we click done and we have our reporting options. We can generate a report using Microsoft Word. Let's do that real quick. I click generate report and this is one of my favorite parts of simulation in general. What it does is it makes you look like you spent all weekend writing a report when in reality it was a couple clicks away. So you can add things like description, conclusion, designer, your company, uh, a logo if you have a picture of your logo, etc, etc. We click generate and what it does is it kicks off Microsoft Word. You can see it in the background taking screenshots. And very quickly it's going to generate a very nice report. And again, those of you familiar with, with SOLIDWORKS simulation, you, know, you are familiar with this functionality, but it's nice that it's in Simulation Express as well. Okay, so we see here Microsoft Word opens up and we can see our report. The beauty of having this in Microsoft Word is that it's fully editable. I can go in here and I can add description. I can, uh, you can see the table of contents in here. I can change any of these. If I forgot to, if I could type my name, if I forgot to add it uh, in the initial dialog box. I can just scroll through this. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the report. But uh, you can see there are screenshots of the loads and the restraints. It gives us um, volume information, mass properties basically, where the file is stored, as well as any of the material properties. And here's where it shows us our loads and fixtures. It talks about our mesh, the size of the mesh, the tolerance, and whether it's high or low quality mesh. Uh, which we actually don't have control over in Simulation Express. A nice screenshot of the mesh, as well as screenshots of the stress, displacement, and deformed shape. And finally, a screenshot of the last saved factor of safety um, plot that I showed. So this is where it's under 2.5. And you can, I don't know how well this is going to come through on the webinar, but you can see that here that anything under 2.5 is red and anything above 2.5 is blue. And finally, just the conclusion section where you can type your conclusions. Okay, this is a great, great um, added fun piece of functionality to Simulation Express and that you can send this to a customer, you can send this to your boss, and um, and convey all the information from simulation uh, right up the chain. Okay, you can also generate an e-drawings file with all this information in there as well. So we'll just do that real quick. Okay, so obviously the advantage of e-drawings is that they're not static pictures. You can rotate the model around and you can change plots at will. So you can see the factor of safety, the deformation, the displacement here. Okay, you can even see the mesh overlaid over on your plots. Okay, and you have the full e-drawings functionality. I can play which animates between views etc etc I can save this as an executable and send this to someone who may not have SOLIDWORKS and um, and they can open this with their e-drawings so those are our reporting options our output options of 
Simulation Express. And obviously you can take screenshots um, and put them into your own PowerPoint or your own Word document uh, or append them to the, gen the report that was generated. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to optimize our design. As I mentioned before, we're working to a safety factor of 2.5. We want a minimum safety factor of 2.5. So what I want to do is I want to tell Simulation Express, hey, I want to change the thickness of this plate on this side until I meet my safety factor. And yes, I could very easily go in and change this sketch and just rerun our analyses, but um, I want Simulation to do it. I want it to do it for me. So it asked me if I would like to optimize my model. I click Next, Yes and Next. And what I can do is I can actually click on a dimension and it will add that to my variables. Now, Simulation Express is limited to one variable modification. Um, with the full-blown simulation package, you can actually add uh, as many variables as you want, as well as as many constraints as you want. We'll talk about constraints here in a second um, for optimization. So we have D4 at sketch one, which is the thickness here. We're going to range it. We know that 0.75 already fails um, our criteria. We're going to change it from 0.75 to, uh, we'll say, 1.75 inches. So that's the range, that's the design range of thickness that that can be. My constraints are going to be my factor of safety, and I want to make sure my factor of safety is greater than 2.5. And finally, my goal is to minimize the mass. Obviously, I want this to uh, be the lightest that it can for shipping purposes, as well as whatever assembly it's going to go into. Um, I want it just to minimize the mass. When I'm ready, I click Run. And you can see here that it is running the design scenario. We can see here the initial one fails, but we already knew that. Fails are pink green are passing criteria. Okay, now that the design scenario is done, the optimization is complete, we see that it's settled into a thickness here of 0.97 inches with a safety factor of 2.51 and a mass of about four kilograms. So we see here that the initial value is 0.75. If I check this box, it'll show us our optimal value. Um, when I click next, that's, uh, it just says the results are out of date because obviously um, any of the pictures that I had are for the 0.75. And I can go ahead and start the simulation over again. In conclusion, um, remember, Simulation Express is great for parts um, because it's, you can't do assemblies or, or anything like that, multi-body parts in Simulation Express. So make sure that you just have a single body part, linear static studies with small displacements, simple loads and restraints, and um, it's great for a quick and easy um, accurate does have an asterisk next to it because you have to make sure that your mesh is small enough to capture your geometry. Um, results for every designer. That's all we had for our uh, quick presentation. Uh, I will open up the floor to any questions uh, via, via the text. So if you have any questions, give us a call. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.